Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. So friends, in previous lecture we have started your chapter number six, that is the classification of the plants, which is the part of your science and technology book. So in previous lecture we have discussed about the five kingdom classification of the living organism. Because why? Because the plant are also living organism. So we know that. Bio Kingdom classification system was given by the R.H. Whitaker in 1959. So, in previous lecture, we have also discussed about the criteria. The criteria which was used by the R.H. Whitaker to classify the living organism in different bio groups. And after that, we have also discussed about the two sub kingdoms of the plants which was given by the R. Ichler, that is the botanist who classified the kingdom plantae into two different groups and these two sub kingdoms or two these two groups are also known as the sub kingdom so in 1886 the R the isler that is the botanist this botanist or the isler divided the kingdom plantae into two different sub kingdoms that is known as the cryptogams and another one is the phanerograms we have also discussed about the main difference in between the cryptogams and Panogram. If you are new on my channel, the link of that lecture I have given in the description of, of this, this lecture, you can check it. So, what is the difference between the cryptogams and panogram? Cryptogams, panograms. In previous lecture, we have also discussed that cryptogams means what? Cryptogams means the plant without seed. And panograms means the plant bearing seeds or the plant which produces seeds. Manjas kai, cryptogam kai karat nai, tenchem the bia nasta, the bi tayar karat nai, anagrams manjas kai, tenchem the bia asta, the bi tayar karta. That is the main difference in between the cryptogams and phanograms. And cryptogams and phanograms are the two main divisions of a kingdom planty or a sub kingdoms of the kingdom planty. We have also discussed about the which criteria was used to classify the plants into different two sub kingdoms. In that in that previous lecture, we have discussed the criteria and the, which was the criteria? That criteria was presence or absence of a vascular system that is means xylem and fur for the conduction of water and food. This is the first criteria. After that, absence or presence of certain organs. After that, this is the main difference, cryptogams and phanograms. Another criteria was the uh, presence or absence of the seed. There was many criteria was used to classify these plants into two different sub kingdoms, and these sub, sub, sub kingdoms are cryptogams and phanograms. So, what is the main difference between these two kingdoms? This is the difference between the cryptogams and phanograms. The so, cryptogam and phanograms are the same as the and then cryptogam is separate study. Firstly, in previous lecture, we have discussed that the kingdom plant is divided into two sub kingdoms that is the cryptogams, phanograms. And this cryptogams is again divided into three sub divisions or three divisions. And these divisions are thalophyta, bryophyta, pteridophyta. On which criteria we have classified this sub kingdom cryptogams into the three divisions that, that have also we have discussed in the previous lecture. So, phanograms is always again divided into the two division that is the gymnosperm and angiosperm gymnosperm means gymnosperm, gymnosperm means the seeds are hidden seeds are naked that means we can see their seeds in a naked eyes or by a naked eyes and angiosperm means angiosperm means the seeds are hidden that means we can't see their, their seeds by a naked eyes this is the main difference in between the gymnosperm and angiosperm and these two are the divisions of Sub kingdom phanograms. This angiosperm is again divided into the two groups that is the monocotyledon and dicotyledon, which is depending on the presence, which is depending on the number of cotyledon present in that seed or in that particular seed. If the number of cotyledon is single, then that is referred to the monocotyledon, and if the number of cotyledon is double, that is the dicotyledon. That we all we have discussed in a previous lecture. So previous lecture is a previous lecture was an introductory lecture and was a very important lecture for you. Now what is the main what is what are the differences in between the cryptogams and phanograms? First difference is cryptogams are seedless. That I also we have discussed in previous lecture. 
Panograms means seed bearing plants. Cryptograms no fruits, no flower. Panograms fruits and flowers are present. Cryptograms repro reproductive organs are hidden. That means the organ by which reproduction takes place. We can't see that organs by a naked eye. That means they are hidden in case of a cryptogram. But in case of a panograms, these reproductive organs are exposed or naked. That means that organs we can see by our naked eyes. This is the main difference. After that, cryptogams are less developed and lower plants. Less developed means there is no separate conducting tissue for a conduction of a water and food. This is the main difference in between the cryptogam and phanograms. Whereas the phanograms contains the highly developed conducting tissue or vascular system that is the xylem and cloem. So they are less developed whereas phanograms are highly developed plants. What is mean by lower plants? Lower plants means the plants from which the highly developed plants gets evolved. What is mean by? We have also uh, uh, heard that the first life form was observed in ocean. From that simple type or a sing single type of or a single cell, amoeba, paramecium, etc. get evolved. Manjas kai, samudra madhe kai saga paila jwadala. Tepasna kai zala uta ki ek peshya sajivanchi nirmiti zali. Jaki autisha simple ashe organism hote. Apun amoeba la kaunto, amoeba they are also known as the primitive type of animals. Why they are known as the primitive types of animals? Because from that higher plant, higher animals get evolved. So they are known as the primitive types. Similarly, the cryptogams includes the lower plants or a primitive type of plants. That means from that plants, higher plant get evolved. So they are known as the lower plants or the primitive types of plants. After that, in cryptogams, no xylem, no cloem. In phanograms, xylem and cloem are present. This is also main difference. After that, in cryptogams, absence of root stem loose. There is no root, no stem and no loose. But in case of phanograms, root stems and loose are present. Because why? Because they are highly evolved plants. So these are the, some main differences in between the these two sub kingdoms that is the cryptogams and phanerogams. So firstly we'll, we will be start discuss on we will start discussion on the cryptogams and after that we will be study detailly the phanograms in a next lecture. So, what is the cryptogams and their division? So, firstly we know that what is meant by cryptogams and the characteristics of the cryptogams. So, cryptogams is divided into the three divisions. That is the Thalophyta, Bryophyta and th Pteridophyta. What is the difference between Thalophyta, Bryophyta and Pteridophyta? So, shortly we will be first discuss Shortly, firstly, we will be discuss about the differences in between the thalophyta, bryophyta, pteridophyta. After that, we will be discuss detailly each topic. That is the thalophyta, bryophyta, and pteridophyta. So, what is the main basic differences in between the these three divisions of uh, cryptogams? Thalophyta, bryophyta, and pteridophyta. Thalophyta means thallus. Thallus means what? Thallus means simple plant body or simple body. So thallus means what? Their body is a simple. Simple means there is a not no differentiation of the body parts. No differentiation of body parts means there is no root, no stem, no leaves. That means no differentiated body parts are present in case of that plant. That is the thallophyta. So they are known as the thallus. Where they are present? They are present in water. So they are known as the Aquatic. After that, in case of a thalophyta, no root, no stem, no leaves, and includes mainly algae. That means, in case of a thalloids, the the plants which are included that are mainly the algae. So these are the some basic features of the thalophyta. We will be discuss detailly later. So, what is the bryophyta? So. Here thallo means thallus, here bryo means mosses. Mosses means what? Mosses are the amphibian plants. That means they can live in water as well as on a terrestrial. These are the types of the plants. What, why are they are amphibian? They live on a land 
but they require a water for their reproduction so they are called as the amphibian plants their features no true root true stem and true leaves what is their meaning true root true stem true leaves that means there is no presence of a true root true stem true leaves but instead of a root root like structure is present this is known as the rhizoid instead of a root root like structure is present called as the rhizoid instead of a stem stem like axis is also present so this is not a true stem but stem like axis is uh, is present and leaf no true leaf but leaf like appendages are also present known as the leafy appendages these are the some basic features of the bryophyta after that pteridophyta pteridophyta means pterido means feathery structure the meaning of the pterido word is the feathery structure that means the leaves of that plants are like a feathers of a bird so they are known as the feathery this is like a feathery structure their habitat is terrestrial that means they are found on a land that they are known as the terrestrial plants It includes root stem leaves that means this plant contains root leaves and stem so their body is differentiated whereas thallophyta's bodies are not differentiated that means there is no root no stem no leaves so what are the basic differences in between that thallus mosses or feathery structure or thallophyta bryophyta or pteridophyta in case of thallophyta no root no stem no leaves whereas in case of a bryophyta root stem leaves are present but that are not true that means there are false structure what is meant by false false means like true like that means root like structure is present stem like axis is present and leaf like appendages are present but that are not true this is the main difference between thallophyta bryophyta whereas pteridophyta contains root stem leaves this is the main difference in between thallophyta bryophyta pteridophyta and these are the three divisions of the sub kingdom cryptogamy so firstly we will be discuss about the firstly we will be start from the thallophyta after that we will be complete the bryophyta and lastly we will be discuss on a pteridophyta so our cryptogams will be get completed so in this lecture we will be mainly focusing on thallophyta so now let discuss on a thallophyta so thallophyta thallo thallo means thallus thallus means body is simple and not differentiated into the different parts like a root stem leaves and these are the primitive types of plants what is meant by primitive types of plants thallophyta that are the primitive types of plants means these are the firstly evolved plants from which the complicated or high or the plants primitive type means these are firstly evolved plants from which higher plants get evolved after this is the so they are known as the primitive types of plants so in case of thallophyta these primitive types of plants are included so which plants comes under this division thallophyta mostly the mostly the algae are included in that group but but few types of fungi are also included in a thallo phyta we know that kingdom fungi is a separate phylum but there are some few types of fungi which are without chlorophyll that are included in a thallophyta sub division so which are these fungi like yeast mold these are the types of fungi yeast and molds are the types of fungi which do not have a chlorophyll that are also included in a thallophyta and lichen is the lichen is the association of the algae and fungi that means algae and fungi lives together why they lives together because we know that fungi can't produce food because why because they do not have a chlorophyll that means the fungi which are included in a thallophyta these are the molds and yeast 
and this fungi do not have a chlorophyll so that fungi can't produce a food so for the purpose of food they are dependent on another plants or algae so this fungi and algae lives together because algae contains chlorophyll algae produces a food and that food gets supplied to that fungi that means that two organisms live together and act as a single organism which two organism first one is algae and another one is a fungi so this type of relationship is known as the symbiotic relationship or a symbiotic association what is meant by symbiotic because both are beneficial to each other that means algae supplies food and fung and fungi provides a essential environment to that algae for the production of a, for the purpose of a photosynthesis that means that fungi absorb the moist of air or the moist which is present in a air and that moist or that what is meant by moist moist is moist is nothing but the water which is present in a air and that water gets supplied to algae for the purpose of a photosynthesis so in this way this both are beneficial to each other and this type of structure or association this is the lichen and association is known as the symbiotic association or symbiotic relation discuss later so these are the algae fungi and lichen so in case of a thallophyta algae fungi and lichens are included in that thallophyta division mostly algae are included so what are the characteristics of the thallophyta division they are aquatic that means they live in a water water may be marine water or fresh water marine means ocean water fresh means lake river these are the sources of the fresh water mostly these thallophyta includes the mostly the algae mostly they include a algae after that algae may be unicellular algae may be multicellular small and large sized algae that means algae shows the algae shows here let see unicellular include unicellular multicellular small and large size that means algae shows a diversity because why because algae may be unicellular multicellular it may be small or it may be large so algae shows the highest diversity or a higher level diversity so that means the algae which are included in the thallophyta may be unicellular multicellular small or large size this is the second characteristics third it contains the chlorophyll so they are autotrophic the plant which are included in a division thallophyta are mostly autotrophic but few are heterotrophic why because the mostly algae are included and algae contains the chlorophyll so algae are autotrophic because with the help of the this chlorophyll they synthesize their own food by the process of photosynthesis but thallophyta also includes some few types of fungi and fungi do not have a chlorophyll so fungi are the fungi which fungi like that yeast and molds are the types of fungi which are included in the division thallophyta but they do not contain chlorophyll so they are heterotrophic so the plants which are included in thallophyta are mostly autotrophic but few are heterotrophic this is the third characteristic fourth characteristic is not differentiated body part not differentiated body parts means no root no stem no leaves this is the fourth fifth one is simple and primitive form of plants we have already discussed it that is they are simple and primitive primitive mean first firstly wall plants after that usually soft and fiber like body if you try to touch a body of a uh, of algae then it will be feel soft and it looks like a fiber fiber means it looks like a thread like a structure so it is a soft and fiber like body that means the plant which are included in the thallophyta have a body which is soft and fiber like or thread like after 
reserve of food stored in the form of a starch. We know that plant produces their food, and also they requ they also require food for which purpose? Because they also require energy for their daily daily works or daily function. But in case of a photosynthesis. food get produced in the form of a glucose in the form of a glucose and that glucose get used by that plants for their function but remaining food get stored in the form of a starch in case of a thallophyta the remaining food of a plant or the remaining food of a algae get stored in the form of a starch this is the six characteristics of that plants after that Seven contains cell wall around cell. In previous lecture, we have already discussed that the plant contains the eukaryotic type of a cell and with a cell wall. In previous lecture, we have also discussed the definition of a plants. In that, we have already seen that they have a cell wall around cell. This is the cell. That black color membrane is the plasma membrane or a inner membrane or a cell membrane. But outside to this plasma membrane or cell membrane, there is another one covering which is shown by blue line. This is the cell wall. So in case of a thallophyta around the cell, cell wall is also present. And last characteristics is vascular tissue absent. What is mean by vascular tissue? Vascular tissue means conducting tissue. There are mainly the two types of conducting tissue are present in the plant. Xylem and phloem. Xylem for conduction of water, whereas phloem for conduction of a food. But in case of a thallophyta, there is no vascular tissue present. This is the another characteristics. If you try to see that algae under a microscope. Um, many times you may be observed a green layer of water. Green layer on a water in a pond. So, what is this green layer? This green layer is nothing but a type of a plant which is that are the mostly the type of a algae. This green, this green layer on a water is nothing but the this is the type of algae. मुझे जब तुम्हें पाने वाले जब क्या जाने का था हिरवा थर बगी इतना तर तो इधर क्या होते होंगे रे तब तो क्या है सुना रे तो एक अलगी सा प्रकार अस्तो कलेक्ट द सैंपल ऑफ दैट वाटर इन अ पेट्री डिश कलेक्ट द सैंपल ऑफ दैट वाटर इन अ पेट्री डिश दिस अलगी लुक्स लाइक अ थ्रेड लाइक स्ट्रक्चर algae contain a green color and look like a thread like structure take a single thread of that algae on a slide put a cover glass and observe under a microscope you could try to observe that thread like algae uh, in under a microscope that structure will be look like that so this is a simple hair like thread like structure but when you try to zoom it under a microscope that structure looks like that this is the single cell so multiple cells get attached to each other i have drawn only a single cell here there is another cell next there will be another cell these are the this is the spirogyra so that means this green layer which you observe over, over water of pond, this is nothing but a spirogyra. And spirogyra is a type of a algae. This is the single cell of a spirogyra. This helical structure which I have drawn in a blue color is chlorophyll. That means they contain a chlorophyll. So they are autotropic in nature. There is a layer outside the plasma membrane. So this is the cell wall. That means they contain a cell wall. And these black dots which are present or I have drawn over a chlorophyll, they are known as the pyrenoid. 
that means this chlorophyll contains the pyranoid pigments and which are helpful for the storage of starch that means that pyranoid help to store the reserve food which is excessive food in case of that fungi in case of that algae get stored in the form of starch and for that purpose of a store of food this pyranoid are helpful example of thallophyta are ulva kara spirogyra sargassum etc these are the examples of the thallophyta division and this is diagram of a spirogyra which is the example of a thallophyta so friends in today's lecture we have discussed the, about the general classification of the plant after that main difference or general differences in between the three divisions of the cryptogams that is the thallophyta bryophyta pteridophyta after that we, we discussed on some basic features of thallophyta bryophyta pteridophyta and we have started to study firstly the thallophyta and now we have discussed on the characteristics of thallophyta so this all are the characteristics of the thallophyta this is the very important characteristics of thallophyta and this is a simple and easy topic for you so in next lecture we will be discuss on a bryophyta and a pteridophyta so in next lecture we will be complete the sub kingdom cryptogam and after that we will be start a phanograms characteristics of the phanograms division of phanogram that is the gymnosperm angiosperms the examples of gymnosperm angiosperm after that the up the division of angiosperm that is the monocotyledon dicotyledon characteristics of monocotyledon characteristics of the dicotyledon so today we will be stop here so friends you could like that video then please hit the like button share with your friends and definitely subscribe to my channel to get that interesting lectures for you thank you